What's going on guys, Nathan here. Today I'm gonna give you a simple poker strategy to start quickly beating your poker games. Now I must warn you right off the top, this is going to be boring. This is going to require discipline, patience, all those dirty words nobody likes these days. But I assume that you clicked on this video because you want to start winning at poker. Well, that's exactly what the strategies you're going to learn today are going to get you doing. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. All right guys, so counting down from seven to one, number seven is to stop playing trashy hands. Seriously, guys, just stop it, okay? This is the number one thing that I get my students to do that quickly changes their results in poker. So for example, if you've got the old queen four of hearts, guys, I'm just gonna be straight up. This is not the kind of hand that you want to be playing in today's games. Instead, you want to stick to the proven winners. I'm talking about hands like pocket aces all the way down to pocket twos. Ace king, ace queen, ace jack, ace 10. King, queen, king, jack, queen, jack, and a bunch of suited connectors, like for example, a 10, nine of spades, a jack, 10 of diamonds, and a bunch of suited aces, for example, an ace, seven of diamonds, an ace, five of hearts. Guys, if you stick to playing only strong hands like this, you're going to have a lot more success. You need to get the trashy hands out of your game starting today. And by the way, if you don't know exactly what hands to play, I have charts for both nine players Player and six player games in my free poker cheat sheet and I will link that up as the top link in the description below. All right guys moving on to tip number six to quickly get you winning in today's games and again this is a boring one don't call three bets out of position. This is not fun guys I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Everybody likes to raise it up pre-flop and then when somebody re-raises them to go ahead and make the call see if they can get lucky after the flop but guys this is a losing strategy in poker because because OOP stands for out of position, meaning you're going to have to act first on the flop, turn, and river. Any of you guys who watch my videos, you know I pound on this all the time. This is a massive proven disadvantage in poker, guys, because you have to act first. You need to give your information away to them first, and any time that is the case in poker, the other player has a massive advantage. They can see what you do first. They can decide to raise you. They can decide to make a bet if you fail to make a bet or they can even fold their hand and save money. So guys, this is crucially important, especially with mediocre hands like a King Jack, for example. If you were to raise this and a good player in particular re-raises you before the flop and you are going to be out of position on the flop. So for example, you're in early position and a good player raises you on the button. We know that we're gonna be out of position on the flop turn and river. You need to be folding this hand, guys, because they're representing a range that creates crushes your king jack. What's going to end up happening here is the board's going to come down a king seven five deuce three and you're going to wind up playing a big pot. They're just going to turn over one of the two hands that crushes you such as ace king or king queen. Guys I'm going to say it straight up this is not a bad beat. A lot of people get this mixed up these days. This is 100% preventable. This is 100% your fault. When a good player re-raises you pre-flop guys they are not doing it with hands worse than king jack they're not even doing it with king jack they're not doing it with king 10 they're not doing it with king nine when you call out a position like this you are digging your own grave in poker you are setting yourself up for a so-called bad beat it's not a bad beat and this is what losing players do you as a solid winning player i assume that's why you clicked on this video no better and this requires discipline again i warned you guys this is going to be a boring video this is not for people who want to splash around and have fun just like the fish that's what the fish do and that's why they get fish level results. If you want to lose in poker, call pre-flop with your king jack out of position and hope to see a flop. If you want to win in poker, guys, you need to have the discipline to fold your hand now and pick a better spot. All right, guys, let's move on to boring tip number five to get you quickly winning in poker, and that is to check raise your monsters. Guys, I literally wrote an entire book on this. It's called Crushing the Micro Stakes. I'll link that up in the description below. But basically, guys, when you hit a set in the blinds, specifically when we're in the blinds we're going to be out of position acting first on the flop turn and river what you want to do here guys is check raise because what this is going to do is trap the maximum amount of money in the middle and allow you to win the biggest pot so let me give you an example you've got two red sixes six of hearts six of diamonds and the flop comes down with the ace of diamonds six of spades and five of hearts guys in a spot like this especially versus an aggressive player you want to go for the check raise 
is. Now, for some of you guys who are new to the game of poker, let me tell you that this is literally, I mean, it is. It's the second strongest hand on this board. There's only one hand that beats us, which is pocket aces, but they are going to have a hand like ace king, ace queen, ace jack, for example, way, way more often than pocket aces here. And with your set of sixes, that's what this is called, three of a kind, AKA a set, you are a little over 90% to win this hand, which is nearly a lock in poker. So we want to play the biggest pot possible. We want to get all the money in the middle. And the way you do this, guys, is to check raise in this situation. Let's move on to tip number four, boring tip to get you quickly winning at poker. And this one is really boring, guys. You need to make tough folds with pocket aces and pocket kings. Guys, if there is one thing that holds recreational players and amateurs back the most is they can't fold a hand like pocket aces or pocket kings. Guys, I get it. Everybody loves to look down at these hands. It's literally the number one and two best hands in poker. But guys, you need to remember, you need to always remember this. It's just one pair. When these hands are not improved on the flop turn and river, as we're gonna discuss in a second, and somebody is giving you clear signals that they have a hand that is better than one pair, it doesn't matter. Your hand's no good. Let me give you an example. You've got two red aces, ace of hearts, ace of diamonds, and a tight player raises you on the turn and tight player that's very key to this hand tight player raises you on the turn of jack eight ten five with two diamonds guys a player like this the tightest player at the table who these players typically play very passively as well and what i mean by that is they're not going to raise you out of the blue here just with top pair or even middle pair instead they're doing this with a hand like pocket jacks for top set queen nine for the flop straight jack eight for top two pair seven nine for a flopped straight pocket eights for bottom set on the flop pocket tens for middle set on the flop i think you guys get the idea all of these hands that i just described to you are either have you drawing completely dead meaning you have zero chance to win the pot or you've got around five percent ten percent at most to win the hands guys we don't need to be a math genius to understand that calling here with those kind of odds is literally the definition of shooting ourselves in the foot guys recreational players amateur players they can't fold their aces here they can't fold their kings here but once again you as a savvy sophisticated poker player clicking on a video like this who is trying to improve their game knows better guys you don't need to see it in poker we've all been in this situation so many times before you know they're just going to turn over one of these hands that has you drawing extremely slim bite your lip fold your pocket aces or your pocket kings now and wait for a better spot this is the definition of winning poker guys is being able to make disciplined folds like this even when it sucks even when it's boring all right guys let's move on to boring tip number three and that is to don't miss value bets well this one's a little bit less boring let's Let's talk about river value bets now guys and basically this is betting when you have a strong suspicion that you have the best hand so guys this is one of the biggest reasons why people lose at poker is because they miss these bets because pots on the river on average are of course the biggest because it's the last street in no limit texas hold'em so if you miss a bet guys of even five big blinds here this is a massive difference for your long-term win rate let me tell you that the top winners in online poker or even live poker these these days they rarely win at a win rate of more than five or ten big blinds per hundred so if you miss a five big blind bet here on the river that could literally wipe out your entire win rate if you miss one of these bets a couple times a session for example let me give you an example once again you have the queen of spades and the jack of diamonds on the river of king queen eight four three and there is no possible flush draw on this board so on the river here we have middle pair with an okay kicker and if we're up against any kind of fishy kind of player, even a regular here, guys, they're going to have so many worse second best hands. Remember, that's the definition of a value bet is we want to get profit versus all of these hands that we beat. Let me give you just a couple examples of hands that definitely a fish will call you here with. That would be queen 10, queen 9, ace 8, jack 8, 10, 8, 9, 8, 8, 7, ace 4. I could go on for days, guys especially if it's a recreational player. You do not want to miss value bets here. Now I've made entire videos here on the channel talking about the bet sizing in situations like that. You can go check those out. But in a quick nutshell, I'm normally going to be betting about 50% of the pot here is because I think
think that is the sweet spot to get maximum value, but also to get calls out of them. If you bet too much, like 80% of the pot or full pot here, they're often going to fold some of these hands, especially if they're a decent player. And if you bet too little, like 20% of the pot, then you're just simply not getting enough value. So aim for about 50% of the pot. So for example, pot's $50, you bet $25. All right, guys, let's move on to boring poker tip number two, and that is to accept losing days. Just quit. Guys, from my nearly 20 years in this game, over 10 years as a professional poker player, I can tell you this is literally the number one key that separates all of the amateurs from the pros. What you need to understand, guys, about the game of poker is that losing days are 100% inevitable. I don't care what some coach in some other video tried to tell you, that if you just try out this new fancy little strategy, this is going to get you a winner every time. Guys, that's not how the game of poker works. Mathematically speaking, weaker players always have a chance to win. They always have a chance to beat you in any hand, guys, and therefore you are simply going to have days where you have no luck at all, where they're hitting all their cards and you're going to have losing days. I do not care if your name is Daniel Negrano, Phil Helmuth, or name any other famous poker pro here. They all have losing days, guys. They just don't talk about it on social media. All right, so let me tell you guys that Captain Comeback literally never wins. This is the biggest reason why people lose at poker, and let me tell you why. It's because if you lose three buy-ins, for example, you're playing cash games, when you play in your worst state, which is what happens when you're losing, you're not thinking clearly, you're frustrated, you're angry, you start making silly bluffs, you start calling with bad hands, you start playing hands like queen four of hearts, for example, you're playing in your worst state, guys, and a lot of people will turn a relatively normal routine loss, like three buy-ins, into a negative 10 buy-in day. Guys, this is death to your win rate. This is death to your poker winnings. This is what buries so many poker players is when they have a really bad day, they end up losing way too much. And therefore, when they come back the next day and things turn around as they always do in poker and you have a big winning day, it's not enough to make up for all of your losses that you threw away. So guys, the biggest key here is just learn to quit when you're on tilt. When you feel the signs of frustration, when you start getting hot under the collar, you start getting angry and frustrated at certain people because they always keep hitting their lucky card against you and you notice your play is starting to deteriorate you start making again hopeless calls you start playing hands you know you shouldn't be you start calling three bets out of position all the things that we already talked about earlier in this video when you start doing those guys it's time to turn off the computer off your phone whatever get off the poker site or if you're playing in a live poker game get up and leave guys it is not worth it you've put too much time and energy into this game to get better you owe it to yourself to learn how to quit you're better than that guys do this for yourself don't do it for anyone else don't allow a small losing day to turn into a devastating losing day you're gonna have a lot more success at the poker tables all right guys let's move on to number one boring tip to get you quickly winning and that is to leave bad poker tables immediately guys i've said it so many times in these videos poker is a game played against other people your results are going to be directly correlated with who you choose to play against so choose wisely. So guys, like I said, this video is going to be boring. The so-called experts don't want to admit it. They all want to tell you these days, oh, just go study some more solvers or GTO. That's going to magically make you beat good players. Guys, this is the definition of insanity. You don't beat good players. They're good. That's the whole point. Everybody thinks that they're just going to go study the solver program for eight hours a day. They're also studying it for eight hours a day. Unless you literally think you are Einstein level genius or you can somehow see their cards you're never going to beat these players at a very high level the players that we make the money against in poker guys are the fish it's the bad players the recreational players who just play for fun who play queen four of hearts who call your three bets out of position with king jack all the things we talked about before these are the players who make large fundamental mistakes at the poker table and the great thing is you don't need to waste eight hours a day studying solvers or are spending thousands of money on courses teaching you how to play game theory optimal or some whatever the nonsense is these days guys trust me from my nearly 20 years in this game the secret that all the pros don't want you to know is that all of the money in this game comes from the bad players guys you don't even need to take my word for it go load up any online poker site these days and go look at the highest level tables there's a reason why they're all of the top pros are sitting out in those games they won't play each other because they're waiting for the fish they will tell you to go buy
buy their solver software or their super expensive GTO course, but that's not what they're doing when they actually go sit down to play poker because they know better. They know all the money in poker comes from the fish and you need to know that as well. Guys, if you want to improve your game, that's fine. Go play against some good players, but if making money is your goal, and, and I'm going to assume that, that probably is if you're watching this video, you need to focus on your game selection. I'm not saying to never play against good players. Obviously, it's inevitable sometimes, but guys, the number one skill in poker these days that all the experts will never tell you is that all the money comes from the fish. Again, watch what they do. Don't listen to what they say. If making money in this game is important, leave bad tables immediately. Do not play in a poker game unless there is at least one clear recreational poker player in it, and you're going to have a lot more success. All right, guys, like and subscribe if you found this video helpful, and if you want to know my entire strategy to smash the small and mid-stakes games, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. That will be the top link in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. All the best at the poker tables.